All right, so this is going to be solving radical equations with algebra. Uh, this is for Tuesday, what is it, January 25th? And this is going to be for both uh, L and K. Um, last couple of problems, we'll say, are just for K. But let's get started with some of the ones that are for both. Now, solving square root equations. Let's first talk about ones that just have one square root. So stuff like this. What you want to do is you want to isolate the square root. So get the square root by itself, nothing else on that side. Square both sides, helps get rid of the square root, and then solve for your variable, generally x. Finally, you want to check your answers. Um, you want to plug those in. Make sure nothing, make sure everything works. Make sure you don't have uh, some square root equals a negative number, something that would give you an imaginary answer. So uh, let's go ahead and let's just jump into it. So the very first one, our square root is by itself. Sorry, got something in my eye. Oh, wow, that's bad timing. Okay, um, the square root is by itself already. So we have done our first step. We have isolated the square root um, by doing nothing. Now, second step, is we want to square both sides. So we're going to square the left side. Let's get a little bit more bold here. Also zoom in some. We'll square the left side. We'll square the right side. And now we are left with 2x equals, well, 4 squared is 16. Okay. Now we're going to solve for our variable. We want to solve for x. So we have 2 times x. So we can divide by 2. And now we have x equals 8. And that seems like a reasonable answer. So let's just plug in square root of 2 times 8 equals 4. So we're plugging into the original function. Where there was an x, you know, let's do it this way. Where there was an x, we now have an 8. Now, 2 times 8 is 16. Square root of 16 does equal 4. We are good. So this seems like a good answer choice here. All right, let's try the second problem. Square root of x minus 1 equals 5. Now, this square root is isolated. It's by itself on this side. We don't have to do anything. So what that means is we can square both sides. Now we have x minus 1 equals 25. Solving this, just add 1 to both sides. We have x equals 26. All right, let's try plugging this thing in. So our original equation was square root x minus 1 equals 5. Well, we're plugging in 26 for our x here. So if we do this, 26 minus 1 is 25. Square root of 25 does equal 5. We are happy with the answer. So 26 seems like a reasonable answer. Finally, let's try this last one. The square root is isolated, it is by itself on this left side of the equation. So we can go ahead and square both sides. We now have 5x minus 1, 2 squared is 4. Solving this, add 1 to both sides. We have 5x equals 5. And then we can divide by 5 and get x equals 1. Now let's try plugging this in. We have 5 times x minus 1 equals 2. Well, our x value is 1. Now, 5 times 1 is 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 does equal 2. So we are good here. All right. So that, that's with just the x on one side. Let's see if we have a slightly more complicated one. So these, we actually have to clean up the side before we can take a square root. Now, it's worth noting that on, okay, dog laid down. Um, on the last test, I was seeing a lot of answers where people were taking square roots early or trying to square the side early. I can't square all of this. If I do, I end up with kind of a mess. Um, so what we want to do is we want to get that square root by itself. So we're going to get rid of this 6. 
So then I have x plus 1, and that entire side is under the square root, equals negative 3. Cool. Now I can square both sides. And when I do, I have x plus 1 equals 9. Solving this is just subtracting 1, x equals 8. All right, let's try plugging this in and make sure this works. All right, square root of x plus 1. Okay, put a little dash there. Plus 6 equals 3. So our x value is 8. Well, 8 plus 1 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. Plus 6 equals 3. Uh, now that doesn't really work. Because 3 plus 6 is 9. This is not working. This is not a real solution. And we can check this really simply by grabbing a calculator. So let's try this. I'm going to put the left side into y1 just like we did on Monday. So square root x plus 1 plus 6, right side is 3. And if I hit graph, you can see these things don't touch at all. So, our, so this x equals 8 is not a real solution. So our actual answer is no real solutions. Okay, so that's why you check your answers. Make sure this stuff works. All right, let's try this other problem. We have two times square root of x minus three equals negative eight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply both, well, right now the sides are being multiplied by two. So let's divide both sides by two. Now we have square root x minus three equals negative four. Cool, now we can square both sides. We have x minus 3 equals 16. If I subtract 3 from both sides, I have x equals 13. And I want to plug this in and make sure this works. 2 square root 13 minus 3 equals negative 8. So 2 square root of... Did I do that right? No, I didn't. I didn't. I should have added 3 here. So instead of 16, this should have been... 19. So let's try that instead. So let's plug in 19. Small mistake. 19 minus 3 is 16. That works out a lot better. Square root of 16 is 4. So I have 2 times 4 equals negative 8. Well, 2 times 4 is positive 8. Positive 8 doesn't equal negative 8. So again, our answer is no real solutions. All right, let's try some other ones. Now, you can solve square root equations with uh, square roots on both sides. So problems like these. Uh, what you want to do is, one, make sure that you have one square root on both sides. Two, square both sides. Three, try to solve as best you can. All right, so start with this stuff. First off, do we have a square root on both sides? Yes, we do. There is a square root on the left side and the right side. So what we're going to do is we're going to square both sides. Now if I do that, I have 6 plus x equals 2x minus 6. Now I want to get all my x's on one side. So let's do that. Let's, uh, let's subtract an x here. So now I have 1x left over. I still have my minus 6, I still have my positive 6. Let's get rid of this minus 6 by adding 6. So now I have 12 equals x. That seems like a plausible answer. Let's try plugging it in. So if I did that, I'd have 6 plus 12, trying to write my x in blue, equals 2 times 12 minus 6. All right. Let's try this. The left side, I'd have square root of 18. The right side, I'd have 
2 times 12, which is 24 minus 6. Well, 24 minus 6 is 18. So I have square root of 18 equals square root of 18. That seems like this stuff it works out. I know that we're not actually bringing it down to a single number, but realistically, the simplest this is going to get is 3 square root 2, and it's not really. We can see square root of 18 equals itself. That's, that's the main thing. So, uh, 12 as our solution seems to work. Let's try the other one. First off, we have a square root on both sides, so we're good for our first step. Let's go ahead and square both sides here. And now we have 2x plus 1 equals x minus 5. All right, again, move all our x's. Subtract x, subtract x. We now have x plus 1 equals negative 5. We're going to subtract 1, subtract 1. We have x equals negative 6. All right, that seems possible. But let's try plugging it in. If I did this, I'd have 2 times negative 6 plus 1 equals square root of negative 6 minus 5. Okay. Now if we do this, we'd have square root of 2 times negative 6 is 12. Negative 12 plus 1 is negative 11. On the other side, we'd also have square root of negative 11. Now, while these things equal each other, the real problem here is that square root of negative 11 is not a real number. It's just not. So in this case, we're probably going to see no real solutions. Again, what we can do is we can confirm that with graphing. Put this on the left-hand side. square root 2x plus 1 square root x minus 5. And if we graph these we can see these lines are not likely to touch. Um, they're actually if this thing will let me zoom out I'm not sure it will. But as we're zooming out further and further you can see there's no point that these things are going to touch. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's go on. And these are still, this is still both L and K level. So let's try this. If I'm trying to solve problems like this, I need to get my square roots on both sides of the equation. So what we need to do is we need to move all this stuff over to the other side. Well. The opposite of a negative square root is a positive square root. So if I add 2x plus 11 on one side, that would also add it on the other side. So what we'd end up with is square root 4x plus 1 equals square root 2x plus 11. Cool. Now we have our square roots on both sides. Let me clean up this square root slightly. So what we can do then is we can square both sides. Now we have 4x plus 1 equals 2x plus 11. We're going to subtract 2x. We have 2x plus 1 equals 11. That gate moved all our x's to one side. Let's move all our numbers to the other side. So subtract 1, 2x equals 10. Divide by 2, x equals 5. All right. Then we have the right side of this graph, or the right equation, which is going to be same idea. Oh wait, no, I need to plug this in and check it. Um, all right, let's just do that real quick. So, four times five plus one, square root minus two times five plus 11 equals zero. All right, four times five is 20 plus 1, so we have square root of 21, minus 2 times 5 is 10 plus 11, square root of 21. Does the square root of 21 minus the square root of 21 equals 0? Yeah, I think it does. 
Number minus itself should always equal zero. So we're good here. Everything checks out. We're happy. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's try this one. Same idea with the start. We're going to add this square root to both sides. So now we have square root of 5x equals square root of 2x plus 3. Square both sides to get rid of the square roots. 5x equals 2x plus 3. And solve this just by subtracting 2x. So now I have 3x equals 3. Divide by 3 x is 1 and now we can plug this in and double check that we're right so square root of 5 times 1 minus square root of 2 times 1 plus 3 equals 0 5 times 1 is 5 so I have square root of 5 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5 so I have square root of 5 again equals 0 square root of 5 times square root of 5 this stuff should equal 0 every single time. So we are happy with that. We're giving this the seal of approval. All right, let's move on. Now we get a little more interesting. Square roots only on one side, what do we do? Um, well, we get the square root by itself and then we square it and then we live with our consequences. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I square both sides, now I have 8x equals x squared. We have a quadratic. Welcome to quadratic solving. Now, um, we can solve this a variety of ways. Um, how I want to solve it is, mm, let's keep things, let's keep things basic. We can solve this in different ways. Let's, let's solve this one one way and we'll solve the other one the other. So in this case, x goes into both. So what I can do is I can pull an x out and now I have x times eight equals x times x. Uh, okay, I could do that. Let's not do that. Let's actually do it a different way. Let's get everything on one side. That's the better way to do this anyway. So now I have x squared, actually I have zero equals x squared minus 8x. Cool. Now I can solve by factoring. There's an x in each of these things, so 0 equals x times x minus 8. I factored. Each factor has to equal 0. So x equals 0 and x minus 8 equals 0. Add 8 and now I have x equals 8. So I have two possible solutions. Let's see if they work. Let's try plugging 0 in. Square root of 8 times 0 equals 0. Yeah, okay. 8 times 0 is 0. So square root of 0 equals 0. That checks out. We'll call that one good. Let's try the other one. Uh, square root of 8 times 8 equals 8. Well, 8 times 8 is 64. Square root of 64 equals 8. Yeah, it checks out as well. So that's all good. That all works. Uh, so let's do the same thing on the other one. Let's make sure it all works here. So do the same starting step. Square this, square this. Now I have 4x equals x squared. Okay, we're gonna subtract 4x. Now I have zero equals x squared minus 4x. I could solve this however I want to with quadratic equations. I could use the quadratic formula if I really cared to, um, but I wouldn't. I would just factor out an x. So we have x times x minus four. Saying our two factors equal zero, x equals zero, x minus four equals zero. Add four to both sides on this one. So now I have x equals four. So again, two possible solutions. Try plugging them in. Square root of four times zero equals zero. Yeah, that works. Uh, square root of four times four equals four. So square root of 16 equals four. Yeah, that works. So both of these things work. All right. Let's finally get to a K only problem. So 
Um, yeah, I think this is the only one that's KO only uh, for the day. So if you are in a level, you don't have to watch this bit. All right. Now, remember, raising to the one half power, same thing as a square root. So we can get rid of it same way as a square root by squaring both sides. Now I have 20 minus x equals x squared. All right. Cool. This is a quadratic. Let's make this thing equal 0. Add x to both sides. Subtract 20 from both sides. Now I have 0 equals x squared plus x minus 20. I can solve this with completing the square. I can solve this with square root method. I, I Actually, I'm not sure I could solve this with square root method. Technically, complete the square is square root method, but uh, too tired, too late for that one. Um, let's just use factoring here. Um, I know that this starts with x squared, so both factors have to start with x. 20 is 4 times 5. That seems like 1 apart, so I'm going to do a plus 5 and minus 4. All right, set both equal to 0. So that x equals negative 5, x equals positive 4. Cool. Got two solutions. Let's find out which one's wrong. All right. So let's plug this into the original thing. Um, if I did that, let's first do negative 5. So I'd have 20 minus negative 5 raised to the 1 half power equals negative 5. Well, minus and negative, same thing as positive. So I have 25 to the 1 half power equals negative 5. That's square root of 25 equals negative 5. It doesn't really seem that plausible to me. Um, your square roots generally equal positive numbers. It's not really what we're going for here. So I'm going to say that this is probably not an answer that we want. But let's try the other one. 4. 20 minus 4 raised to the 1 half power equals 4. So 16 to the 1 half power equals 4. Square root of 16 does equal 4. This works out. So we're happy with 4. That's going to be a real answer. All right, let's try solving the other problem here on the right. Same idea, where what we can do is we can square it to get rid of this 1 half power, this square root. And now I have x squared equals negative 10 plus 7x. All right, let's get rid of this stuff. Minus 7x, minus 7x, plus 10, plus 10. So now I have x squared minus 7x plus 10 equals 0. Cool, nice little quadratic we got here. Be a shame if someone factored it. So let's do that. Um, I'm thinking x and x minus 2 and minus 5 should do the trick. So x minus 2 equals 0, x minus 5 equals 0. Add 2 to both sides, x equals 2. Add 5 to both sides, x equals 5. So those are my two potential solutions. Let's check them. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all this stuff. Actually, can I just grab all this? Yeah, I can't really. All right. Let me just kind of do that stuff. All right, uh, I'm on plane 2 first. So if I do that, I have 2 equals negative 10 plus 7 times 2. And this is all raised to the 1 half power. I'm just going to put it under square root. I think that's easier to understand. Um, 7 times 2 is 14. So what I have is I have square root of 4 equals 2. That seems right. So this 2 stuff seems to work. Let's try the same thing with 5. So five, x is 5 minus negative 10 plus 7 times 5, and that's all under a square root. Okay, 7 times 5 is 35, so I have 5 equals square root of 25. That also seems to work. So I think this 5 also works. Uh, again, let's just double check. Two solutions isn't that common, and I like being on the safe side when I'm teaching my classes. So x, negative 10, plus 7x, raised to the 1 half power. 
If I graph this, it looks like it crosses twice. Let's see our table at two. Yep, that works. And at five, that works. So we're good. All right, that's really it for today's lesson. Uh, go ahead and take a look at today's assignment, which isn't too bad. But we have some functions shown on the graph. Um, and we want to determine our solution. We want to use a table for some solutions. Um, yeah, this is kind of more stuff that we did yesterday. Uh, there are some decimal solutions here, so you may have to solve some stuff by hand. All right, hopefully that helps. That was kind of a long video. Uh, if you're still watching, good on you. Um, hope you're watching. Uh, hope this helps. Honestly, hope this helps. So have a good one, y'all.